One of the things that I'm seeing is, is when I came into the picture, um, you know, the, there, there were a couple of people. Michael Schultz had made a couple pictures. Um, actually, Sidney Poitier had made a couple um, pictures. You know, but it was kind of one-off, you know. Charles Burnett had just started right about the same time that I had started. Um, Spike Lee, I, I got Ernest Dickerson to shoot Brother from Another Planet because I had seen Spike's uh, Joe's Bedside by Barbershop, we got heads. And it was the best reel that we got. You know, and then we were looking for as many African Americans to be on the crew. It's like, oh, Ernest Dickerson is an African American guy. What a bonus. Because he wins the, the best cinematographer prize of, of the people that we're looking for. Honey Dripper is set in 1950. Danny Glover plays the proprietor of the Honey Dripper Lounge. And he's still, he's a piano player. He's still presenting live music, uh, kind of old fashioned blues. He's getting killed from competition across the street from uh, the Ace of Spades Club where they have a, a jukebox and are playing a little more contemporary music. And uh, in this desperate bid to save his club and pay the rent and pay his liquor bills and you know just kind of survive, he books a guitar player, which he's never done before, from New Orleans, who's got a big hit on the jukebox. Guitar Sam, get on this train. He's in the hospital back in Little Rock. Hospital. And uh, when that guy doesn't show up, he realizes, hey, nobody knows what this guy looks like. Maybe I could put somebody up there instead of him. And he starts to build this very complex you know, house of cards. Charles Dutton plays his partner in the club. And uh, they're kind of running around trying to build this, this scam up. And uh, somehow he ends up being a guy who lies, cheats, and steals. And we're still rooting for him at the end of the movie. You know, the biggest compliment that I get as, as a, a movie director is that we ask people to work for scale and they say yes. And uh, in this one we have, you know, Danny Glover, Charles Dutton, Lisa Gay Hamilton, Sean Patrick Thomas. We have uh, Yaya DaCosta is in it, um, just uh, Vondi Curtis Hall, uh, Ruben Santiago, a um, lot of just one after the other. I, so uh, I often felt kind of like the, the, the coach of an all-star team while I was there and just seeing who was on the set that night. Uh, and then equally in the music side of it, uh, we have Keb Moe and Gary Clark Jr. from Austin, Eddie Shaw who used to play with, uh, um, Eddie Shaw used to play for years and years with Howlin' Wolf, um, Arthur Lee Williams on the harmonica, just you know, incredible musicians as well. Uh, Dr. Mabel John um, uh, plays an important part in it. And we've put them together as a, the kind of Honey Drooper all-star band and toured some of the jazz and blues festivals with them. So we had these kind of two groups of great professionals checking each other out and you know, the actors, some of them were playing music for the first time and the musicians were acting with some of them for the first time. So it was a very nice vibe on the set for that reason. Ike Turner and, and Chuck Berry and T-Bone Walker were very much in my head when I was thinking about the character that Gary Clark Jr. plays. The pioneers who took that guitar and said, you know, now we've got the firepower, we've got the volume to compete with the piano. Um, but what if I played the horn line? What if I played the piano line? And very quickly the guitar kind of took over from the piano as the lead instrument on the, on the bandstand. What's the name of this town? Name like that sounds like a good place for a musician. Only night I ever been in jail was a town called Liberty. Sun come up, you see where you land. Honey Dripper is set in 1950, partly because that's the year that the solid body electric guitar came out, and partly because it's the year that an awful lot of other stu stuff that's interesting about America was going on. The armed forces were being integrated for the first time by President Truman. Most of those army bases were in the South. Um, you've got the, the beginnings of what eventually was called the Civil Rights Movement starting. Uh, and it's, you know, just as Korea was kind of the forgotten war, there's an era of music there, there's this rhythm and blues era that's kind of the forgotten era in music. And, and because of that, I feel like, you know, getting to see Honey Dripper, it, I hope it opens up a whole really incredible, vibrant era of music, um, you know, for, for people who are into music that they really haven't heard of before. You got quite the reputation around here, Tyrone. People say you put some poor black boy in the grave.
just people talking. I think one of the main you know, differences now is that there are, are more opportunities, more people are making opportunities because it's cheaper to make a, a first time film or a low budget film. So that some of the pressure that was on people like Charles Burnett and Spike Lee when they started to, oh, you're, if you're only going to get you know, one or two outings, you better make it really count. You better make it really something that, that, that's about race relationships and really important. Some of that pressure is off, so I see African-American filmmakers say, hey, I like science fiction. Hey, I like detective. You know, hey, I like action adventure. Hey, I, I like, you know, whatever it is. You know, Spike has directed a couple movies that are mostly white people. That pressure to have every film be the African-American statement is off, which is great because, you know, basically this is, a, this is a, an industry, it's an art that should be open to everybody, and everybody shouldn't have to because of who they are ethnically only make movies about themselves. Um, you know, there's people with all kinds of talents in the African-American community, and the great thing that I'm starting to see is they're getting to stretch out a little bit more.